Hello guys, take a look at these Blender expert tricks I want to share with you today. Let me know in the comments how many of these are new to you. I swear, some of these came to mind as I was making this video, and I wonder, how did I not figure that out earlier? Google, Bing, all are your friends. This might seem obvious, but I can't stress how important it is. You can easily find grunge maps, textures, references, alpha textures for detail, bump, and normal maps using image search. When you download an image, just drag the image directly into the editor to use it. If you have it in the image viewer, you can also just drag it from there into the editor. When making anything, decide early how much detail you want to see what you can get away with. A simple image like this can turn into a detailed model with a single texture. All you have to do is model something that's approximately the shape of the object in your texture or image, then align your 3D camera to match the image. In edit mode of the object, use U and the project from view option to create UVs that resemble the object in your image. You can now use the image as a texture in your material, which will make your object look more detailed. If you want to create a circle quickly, try this. Make two crossing cuts with the knife tool if you don't have any, then select the middle vertex and bevel it using Control shift b Increase the resolution with the mouse wheel. Change the shape to about 0.07 in the bevel setting. To get a perfect circle, get rid of the inside vertices using F and use Shift-Alt-S to enter sphere mode, then press 1 to make it a full circle. Now you can add other details as you want. If you are adding windows to a building, instead of creating them one by one, select all the faces you want to be windows. Use inset to create the window frame. Make sure to press I twice so that you inset each window independently. To change the scale of the windows, access the pivot point menu using the period key and change the pivot point to individual origins. Now you can scale the windows in the X or Z direction individually. You can extrude inwards, inset again, and extrude again depending on the detail you want. If you want more subdivisions, right-click and subdivide as long as you want, then inset and extrude to the level of detail you want. If you want outside detail, select the outside edge loop of all the windows, duplicate it using Shift-D, then move it out and use Alt-E and extrude along normals to add thickness. If you want more detail, add a cube, scale it to proportions and duplicate it, moving it to every window you want. If you want to reuse detail in edit mode, select the mesh you want to duplicate. Snap the cursor to the location where you want the mesh to be moved by using Shift right click. Then use Shift D to duplicate it and Shift S to access the snap menu. Use selected to cursor to move what you selected to the cursor position. Make sure you turn on offset so that the mesh is not merged into a single point. No matter how big your textures are, they will look tiled when scaled enough. Reduce the tiling effect by blending two different textures with a noise texture. When your reflections are too shiny, add a math node and play with the add value. You can also add a color ramp to create more contrast. If you want to add dust, moss, and other effects that depend on the slope of a wall, use vertical gradients. To create this, first create a new UV map and call it vertical gradient. Select everything in edit mode, then in side view, unwrap using box projection. In your material, you can use the vertical gradient UV, separate the vector, and look at the Y component. You can now select parts of your mesh, like roofs and walls, and move them around so that each has a definitive gradient. You can use this as a mask to add dirt or moss to any object. When it comes to detail, the knife tool is your friend. Use it to add cracks to walls and windows. To make broken windows and glass, make a few edge cuts with the knife tool and make sure your glass is reflective enough. For the missing area, just add a dark and very rough material. This will make the glass look broken.
Sometimes you want to reuse something from one material in another, but control everything in one area. For example, if you have dirt and moss in one material and want to use it on other materials, you can turn the nodes into a node group. Then, you can import this node group into other materials you want to use, like on a brick texture. You just have to connect the node group to the other materials, and any changes you make inside the node group will reflect in all materials using the group. You can also use custom parameters so that each copy can be controlled independently. If you are creating ground for objects to sit on, use dynamic paint to add displacement around the objects. First, make sure the ground mesh is well subdivided. Activate dynamic paint in the physics tab and set the type to canvas, the format to vertex, and the surface type to weight. In the output section, activate the weight paint group by clicking the plus sign. Now, select the object, in this case, the house, and activate dynamic paint as well, but this time set it as the brush. In the source settings, change paint to mesh volume plus proximity. You can preview the weight paint by going to weight paint mode with the ground selected. Add a displacement modifier to the ground and use the DP pull weight vertex group as the influence. Adjust the strength to determine the slope height. You can also select the brush to control the fall off or brush radius. Additionally, you can add another displacement modifier and again use the DP weight group to influence the noise. This time, click the arrows so that no displacement happens in the weight group area. You can repeat these steps for other objects you want on the ground, like other houses, trees, and cars. Whenever these objects are moved, the ground will also be updated. If you have multiple objects, you can select them all at once, then select the brush object and use Control L. Choose copy modifiers to make the selected objects brushes as well. This trick can also be used to scatter objects close to surfaces using a particle system or geometry nodes. Add a particle system of type hair, scroll down to the vertex group settings, and in the length settings, use the vertex group for the canvas. In the render settings, change render as to object and select a rock. This will be the rock particles. As you can see, they are now where the brush objects are and it's all procedural. You can create another particle system for grass, plants, small rocks, and more, and they will all work as you want, instancing them closer to larger objects, just like in the real world. Color IDs are a great way to edit different parts of a material easily without duplicating the material or texture. In this example, we have a house that uses a single material and texture for the walls, windows, and roof. If you want to change the color of the roof separately without making it too complicated, create a color ID. It's easy. Google for color and find an image with at least four different colors. Import the image into your material, create a new UV map, and call it color IDs. Use this UV map in the material as the coordinates for the color ID image. Select the faces that make up different parts of your object and move them to a color section. In this example, I'll move the roof to the green part, the windows to the red, and everything else to the yellow. To make edits to a specific part of the material, we need to select by the color ID we just set up. Add an RGB node and sample the color you want to select, and a math node with the compare operation. Add the color ID image into the second input and use the epsilon value to increase or decrease the selection tolerance. Duplicate this setup for any color you want to select, and now you have a mask for any part of the mesh you want. You can add effects like RGB curves using the mask as a factor to only affect the selected part of your mesh. As you can see, there aren't many, but most of them are unique. So let me know in the comments which one was your favorite and how many you already knew.